I'm turning you on. And I've watched a lot of people, just like turning a radio or television on, turn, turn me off, and I've watched them turn other ministers off. I've watched them turn off men uh, of note, men with reputations. Because feeding the sheep, have you ever been out of a pastor and tried to feed sheep? It's very difficult. Yes, it is. The sheep herder will tell you that. When some of those sheep are sick and don't know it, and some of those sheep uh, can't walk well, and some of those sheep are wounded, and some of those sheep are bullish with one another, and you can't get them to lie down, you can't get them to follow the shepherd, it's very difficult. So this command that Jesus gave Peter was not just a one, two, three, four, five, six command. You know what Peter had to have to feed the sheep and obey this command? He had to have the revelation of Christ. And he had to have the power of the Holy Ghost in him. And he had to have the anointing. Now, now let me get to that. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Stay with me a moment. It's the anointing. Acts 10, 38 said how God, and I want to point this out, Jesus Christ himself had to be on it. Yes, he was. But I'm saying he had to be. Jesus would have never performed the miracles, did the work, drove back the Pharisees, or put the doctrines of Christ in the earth if he had not been anointed. Because you cannot do anything in feeding the sheep of God without an anointing. And you, I'm not talking about self-anointing. And I've seen self-anointing, and I've seen anointing from God. How many, how many agree with me? There's a self-anointing that men can have. You know, preachers learn to be speakers. Uh, preachers learn to be speakers. And there, there's some very good speakers. And they have a self-anointing that can persuade you maybe not of the truth. But they're very anointed because they're very polished, they're very smooth, they're right. educated. They're very able, adept with words. And you may think that anointing is feeding me truth and it's self-anointing. Yes. But there are prophets of God now. They're in the earth. Yes, there are men of God and women of God now that are anointed, not self-anointed. They can't do it themselves. They confess they can. They get in the pulpit humbly. They don't get there bullish and proud. They don't walk into it and say, I am God's gift to men. They walk in there trembling and praying, oh God, touch me. And oh God, touch the people. And let the people get something from what I'm saying. And let them leave this church tonight with walls broken down and hearts mended and spirits healed and healing in their life and joy in their heart and not a bunch of confetti not a bunch of religious confetti of false teaching, false doctrine but they go down in the word and through the anointing of God they bring out the word and the word has life in it I said the word has life in it if you feel that life, it's all right to praise him right now. The Word has life in it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Word has life in it. The Word has life in it. Praise our God. You can tell when a man of God is hooked up to the Word because it brings life. And you can't help but move in that pew. You can't help but make decisions. You can't help but reform. You can't help but become right. Amen. Because that Amen. anointing Amen. that breaks the yoke is there. Yes, sir. How God anointed Jesus, Acts 10, 38. Yes, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sick and oppressed of the devil. Uh, for God, uh, that is oppressed of them, for God was with him. Say, uh, would you repeat that when God was with him? God was with him. Wouldn't you, wouldn't, don't you want God to be with us? Amen. 
you, you sisters back there, don't you want God to be with your preachers? Don't you want God to be with these singers? Don't you want God to be in the church? I long for God tonight. I, I hunger for his Holy Spirit. I need him. Will you confess that you need him tonight? Will you say in your heart, I need Jesus? I need help. Praise the name of the Lord. I need help. I really need help. Praise our God. I really need help. Forgive me if I've sinned against you, my brother or sister. Forgive me if I've hurt you. Forgive me if I've bruised you. Forgive me if Brother Marlowe has been self-anointed or in myself. Because you need feeding. And I want to obey the command, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. But I can't do it in this present age, and you can't, and no man can, unless he uses self-anointing, and that's not food from heaven. Whatever he conceives and devises and comes forth with words well spoken, it's just going in the stomach and never going to be nourishing his spiritual man inside of him. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to obey this command. And here, let me, I'm, I'm, what time? I don't want to overstay, uh, and I will if I'm not careful, because I love the bird, and I'm so glad to see everybody here. And I need you. This pastor needs every one of you. If we feed the sheep, if we bring the church in Bradenton to the level it should be, it is not going to be a one-man show. It's not going to be a one-man effort. Come on, it's going to be a ministry. Yes, it is. It's going to be a ministry. Yes, it is. It's going to be a praying anointed ministry. Yes, it is. It's not going to be one man, Brother Marlowe. I confess to you right now, I am incapable of taking the church to the next level unless God hooks a ministry up with me and brings the people together in one mind and one spirit. You say, Brother Marlowe, you should be all powerful. No, I'm not. Let me, let me remind you, Jesus himself left a city called Capernaum because of unbelief there. It takes belief in the church. Believing in your God that lives inside of you. Believing in the word of God that lives in you. Believing in the commandments of the Lord. Believing in righteousness. Believing in holiness. Believing in godliness. Believing in being separated from the world. Believing in being a peculiar people, praise the name of the Lord. And if that church doesn't, it will stagnate. And someone said stagnation is the last station before you get off at the station of damnation. And uh, let me tell you something right now. When you see a church stagnating, it is the saddest sight you've ever seen in your life. When you see a body of people that one time shouted the glory, one time danced in the spirit, one time lifted their hands and praised him, Come on. one time loved the word, Come on. you see them stagnating and falling back and going in a different direction, it is the saddest sight yes, it is. you'll ever see on this earth. That's right. Just like it's the greatest sight you'll ever see. It's when the spirit of God comes oh, in. Yes. Praise the name. And you can't even minister because of the smoke of the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, how many knows what happened when Solomon dedicated his temple? The ministers could not minister. They could not minister. And I will not be satisfied till I stand here or I'm in this building one night when I cannot in myself minister or do anything else because the glory of the Lord is in the church and the power of God is filled from heart to heart and pew to pew. Praise the name of the Lord. Taking place. I will not be satisfied until one night, one day we gather in here. And back there in that seat, a lady lifts her hands and the power of God falls upon her. A man over here confesses, I just had a spine straightened out. I just have limbs that I couldn't walk well. I can leap now. I can dance now. I can praise him now. And most of all, somebody stands up and says, my heart wasn't right, but now it's pure. I am forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Amen. Are you with me tonight? Do you see where I'm going with this? Amen. We need to feed the sheep, but you have to find how to feed the sheep. And there must be a hungry church. Because if you believe I may need you when I preach, you'll not hear a word I say. If you believe that I'm working on you as a term is, you'll not believe a word I say. You'll resent every minute I'm on my feet. And it's sad that some preachers uh, and congregations become that way. The ministers, they weary the saints, or somehow there's a grievance until he might as well stay seated. I've been in churches where the minister, he'd have been better off if he stayed seated because they were tolerating him. And that church cannot be alive with God. No. If you're tolerating me and I'm tolerating you and we're tolerating each other, we stop. That's it. The train won't go out of the station. Praise the name of the Lord. If 120 had been in that upper room and Peter was tolerating Andrew, Andrew was tolerating Peter, there would have never been suddenly from heaven. There came the sound of a rushing mighty wind. You know what? God wants us to love one another, to appreciate each other, to thank God for one another. Don't look at the club foot. Look at the miracle that Christ has brought you to the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't look at the dress or the suit. Or don't look at the person where they're slender or they have more weight on them or whatever. Get that all away. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth. Don't look at the car they drove up in, whether it be a Lexus or whether it be uh, a, a used uh, 1949 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, whatever. Don't look at that. Don't look at them if they don't have the finest apparel on. Don't look at them. Look at them and say, my God, God brought them here. And they're here because they need to be fed. Praise the name of the Lord. You're here not by accident tonight. You're here because God brought you here. Amen. You're here because God brought you here. God had purpose in you coming here. God brought you here. And God wants to feed you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the must come to Yeah, I'm going to be free up here. I'm going to be free in the Lord up here. I'm going to be free in the Holy Spirit. You be free right there in those chairs. Praise the name of the Lord. Be free over here. I believe God's will is to lift this church to a higher plane and to feed us tonight something we can leave here for the joy of the Lord and the presence of the Lord in our hearts. If somebody said amen. If somebody said praise the Lord. If somebody said glory to God. I want to feed you. It's his command that I do. Now, in, um, and I'm, I'm moving out of here, so you hold on for about four minutes to five minutes, and I'll, I'll be finished, because I'm not going to go in depth in this. I, I mentioned this, and this is my second time in verse um, 1 of Ephesians 5, in conjunction with Peter, that I've been, uh, John, I've been reading. In Ephesians 5 and 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, Qualify that a minute. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us. And has given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God. For a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness. A covetous. Let it not be once named among you. As becoming saints. Now let's get past the heavier weights of fornication and adultery. Those days. Let's get down to jesting. Neither filthiness, uh, neither filthiness or foolish talking nor jesting, yes. which are not convenient. But rather give thee a thanks. <laughs> For this you know that no whoremonger or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God, Christ and of God. Now I'm going to point this out. Dear children, you have children, you that do have children, but you would not be truthful with me if you felt at all times, in every age and every moment they lived, that they were dear. Dear means there's not any grievance. They're not 
in any way upsetting you, their dear children. And I'm a child of God. But to be a dear child of God, it means that I have a relationship and he holds me in the same esteem that a parent would hold a child that is so dear, so, so very dear. I looked at my great grandson this morning in the backyard, and he had, he, he's got this habit when he sees his great grandfather. I don't know, I think I'm getting through that I'm not the average Joe that's walking around. <clears throat> maybe he's starting to recognize it. Yes, sir. Maybe it may be the first recognition that I'm somebody different than just Tom or Bill. Or just. Anyway, he's got this habit that when I woke up, I'll say, Julia, and he'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Elvis Presley resurrection. <laughs> He just keep on doing it, won't he? Won't he? Yeah. Then he starts. Oh. You know, I just look at him. I, I'm a marshmallow melting. <laughs> All the time that he's doing that, I'm a marshmallow melting. Because that's my great grandson. Yes. And he's, he's doing that. And I think it's so cute. But when he is otherwise. <laughs> But when he is otherwise, I, I love him. But at the moment, I'm not saying, dear child. I'm saying, Julian, please. Please, Julian. Dear children. So you can follow God as a child of God, but you can follow God as a dear child. Well, you're just endeared to him. Because you're his. And, and he's yours, and um, you, you love him, and and he loves you. And then this uh, uh, Second Peter one, and um, let me give you Second Peter one and three. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, yes. whereby are given unto us. I want you to say that with me. Whereby are given unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise what, the, what is given us exceeding, yes. that means going beyond. Yes. Exceeding great is beyond great. And precious promises is beyond precious. That by these, these promises great, exceeding, that you, you, me, we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know, all the church needs to do right now, in part, that is not all, but the part it does need to do, is to realize how great and precious the promises are and partake of them so we can have the divine nature. And it's not going to be hard to feed sheep in these last days. Our shepherds, shepherds have to eat too, that have, that have divine nature. It will be impossible to feed those that the divine nature has not entered in and overtaken the natural. Bless God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to obey the command. I'm going to obey the command. Wherever I go, I'm going to try to obey the command, but I want to find a way to feed the sheep. He said do it. I want to find the way to do it. And I hope that if, if, if I become, when I'm sitting down, and Brother Kennedy would be on his feet, I become a sheep, and he's feeding me. Now, I'm feeding now, vessel. you're listening, so I can be feeding you. All of us have to be fed. And all of us have to feed. The church of Jesus Christ is not made up of one body that feeds and everybody else never feeds. And, and I have to feed and I have to receive. Because that's, work, that's the work of Christ in me. Praise the name of the Lord. Because all of us, whether you're an apostle or a prophet or a teacher, you're still called a sheep. 
And you may be a shepherd in your anointing, but you're still a sheep. Praise God. The sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. Praise God. The Lord is my shepherd. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I, I hope you've enjoyed some of that. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yes. I hope you've enjoyed Praise some of that. God. And there's much more. Much more. We just have to find a way to feed the sheep of our day. Because it's our command, it's our work, and we're not about to quit, and we're not going to give up, Amen. and nobody's going to discourage us, nobody's going to back us away from our uh, calling. Amen. Praise the name, Lord, because the calling of God, the callings of God are without repentance, and the election of grace is sure. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't have, would you put that on the screen where everybody, because Brother Ferris's voice is not reaching everyone, he doesn't have a mic, but I want you to be interested right up to the last of this. <coughs> and that's the question Brother Ferris, our, one of our pastors, asked me. <coughs> Simon and Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 150 and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Now I can give you uh, I can give you what my teachers have taught me, but I have never received a revelation on this scripture other than type and shadow. The net is likened to the kingdom of God. Jesus used the fishermen and the net as the kingdom of God brings in fish of every kind. That fish is souls. So we take from this scripture that this, this was the great harvest and the net was not broken. There was a net that was broken previous to this. Amen. There was a net that was broken. Now this net was not broken. So I'm going to give you, and I'll, I'll be brief about it because when you're talking on what you've just heard, uh, you can give that and you can give no more. But this has been used by the church and by teachers showing that the net that wasn't broken is to be the end time harvest because there was a harvest before this and I've heard teachers of the scripture say that was the church 2,000 years ago and it was broken the net was broken the apostles were murdered the net the church disappeared went into what we call the wilderness apostate yes. <coughs> teaching the Bible that net was broken and I've heard them say that this is a picture of the latter church, that the net was not broken and will not be broken because it will be the great harvest full of great fishes and his great souls, a great harvest, latter rain, and there's so many in the latter harvest because the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former. And I'm giving you what I've understood. And it was not is not to be broken. This net, and I agree with that, I agree with that teaching, that the net of the Word of God that's now being fashioned <coughs> to be uh, bringing souls in the church will not be broken. See, I, I've, got a, I've got a safety net. I want to give it to you tonight. How do I go, and I don't think I'm, well, how do you go? I don't want to even use I. You cannot withstand the mental, emotional attitude of this century. The things that are happening. And I won't go into it all because I'd be in, a, I'd be in a quite a place here. You can't do that. Nobody else can. Your mind will be affected. Your spirit will be affected. Your life will be affected. You may be sitting on that church seat, but you're not giving your best to the master because there are things affecting and bothering and troubling you in the present age in which you live. But uh, I, I want to I give you a safety net for that. 
don't, don't ever accept negative thinking in the place of positive thinking. Believe that the net that God is putting together now of the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, that it will not go into apostasy again. There will not be a dark age again because the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh and God's people are going to be busy preparing for it. And I dwell more on the, I don't dwell on those